Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about writing because for those of you who've been following me for a while, you'll know that secretly all I really want to do is write in the morning and garden in the afternoon for fun. And uh, this is my dream. And it's really important to uh, say your dreams out loud. <laughs> Because otherwise they say they, they are buried deep in the back of your head. And if you don't let them out of your mouth, then they'll never come to anything because they'll be a secret, too secret. So my dream is to write, be paid to write in the mornings. and be paid enough <laughs> to write in the mornings. Uh, so, and then I would spend the afternoons gardening for fun. Um, and for many years... I have persuaded myself that I don't have time to write. Uh, it is true that I started a small business, I had two small children, and there were lots of reasons that I couldn't write, that I persuaded myself that I couldn't. I persuaded myself that um, writing wouldn't pay enough, and so therefore I wasn't allowed to do it. I persuaded myself that life was too busy and I didn't have the headspace. And I persuaded myself that I had to leap out of bed in the morning and get on with my day job. Um, and actually, I've had a bit of a explosion in my head, in a good way. Um, also, those of you who followed me for a while will know that I did a day's personal development with Alice Armstrong Scales in September. 2023, so um, kind of three quarters of a year ago. And it was the most useful day. Really, I think maybe perhaps I was ready for it. So it really kind of really rang a lot of bells. But um, since then, I have been busy kind of working on the things that we talked about during that day. And one of the things that we talked about during that day was keeping a little journal. And uh, every day, you give yourself an hour in the morning. And I used to spend an hour in the morning reading the newspaper because I felt that I had to be up to date with the world news. Actually, it just made me depressed and anxious. And I'm relatively up to date with world news just because I do Instagram and I have a telephone that pings me when something exciting happens. Uh, so I didn't actually need to read the paper every morning for an hour and get very stressed about it. So I gave up reading the newspaper and it gave me an hour. And so Alice, instead of, Alice said, don't just kind of allow that hour to be swallowed up by your day. Do something constructive with that hour. Don't lose it. So I started off by following her advice really clearly. So her advice was uh, to sort of keep a little journal, you know, wake up in the morning, set out your intentions for the day, um, make a little list of, of good things and bad things, uh, make a list of things that you're grateful for, you know, classic sort of journaling stuff, uh, which I did um, quite carefully. But then while I was at it, I also, part of that process was that I was supposed to spend 20 minutes reading during that hour, the hour got split up into various small sections and 20 minutes of that hour was to be reading. And that was a revelation to me because I gave up reading the paper, but I realized that of course in the morning, I'm more wide awake and raring to go than I am in the evening. And I habitually read before I go to bed. I'm not sure I could, go, I'm not sure I could sleep if I didn't read a few pages of a book. But at the end of the day, I'm tired. And so I find reading non-fiction in the evening difficult because I can't take it in. So I began to read novels at night and non-fiction in the morning, which was great. And I read masses and masses of non-fiction. And part of that non-fiction reading, I started reading about writing. And that's been really, really interesting. And not all of those books have I followed to the letter, but generally they have good ideas. And 
club members. So I have a YouTube club. So if you're a member of my YouTube club, you'll know that we now have a book club. Uh, about three times a year, we have a session and we talk about the books that we've read, whether they were good, useful, uh, interesting, and so on. And that was really very much inspired by the fact that I was reading for 20 minutes every morning, as well as reading fiction at night. And um, I've been sent by my uh, club members lots of really brilliant ideas for books to read, but also by some of you too, because I talk about reading from time to time and writing on the on the general vlog. Um, and two of the books I have read recently have been really very interesting. So Margaret Atwood on writing, this is called Negotiating with the Dead, is very, very interesting and very, very worth reading. <laughs> so if you're interested in writing, this is a good one. Also useful and transformative in its own way was this one, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And I'm going to admit, I didn't get very far with this. I got, I got this far, <laughs> 60 pages in, and I totally get the principle of it is to, to ease you into a more creative life by insisting on, you know, you make some non-negotiables in your, in your day and your week and your month and so on. And one of the non-negotiables was to have a date with myself, like an artist's date. And I will admit, I found that too difficult uh, because it's hard for me to, I, I know, I know, I should be able to once a week go off and do something for half an hour on my own, um, but I feel racked with guilt or I can't find the time, or there's nothing I particularly want to do, or I'd rather go with my daughter or my son <laughs> to go with somebody. Um, anyway, so that's not been hugely successful, but there was something in here and another book I read, and I'm going to look it up. I might have it right here. Hold on. Uh, oh. um, hold on. Stay there. Oh yes, this one also, Anne Lamotte's Bird by Bird. And both of them talk about basically, make it a non-negotiable that you write. Anne Lamotte is 300 words, uh, but Julia Cameron, it's simpler. It's three pages a day before you do anything else. And I have to say, <laughs> I only started this process in after Chelsea Flower Show at the end of May. I know, it's amazing. And I don't have very much time. I don't give myself very much time to do this. But I do, during the day, spend a lot of time on my own working outside in the fields or doing floristry or kind of doing the kind of work that I can think at the same time as I work. And so I can spend all day thinking about what I'm going to write the next day. And then I can write my three pages or my 300 words quite quickly. I have been reminded just purely by chance, I picked up a pencil the other day and I wrote in a pencil I have to say, it is a lovely, lovely feeling writing in pencil on nice paper. It's very smooth and your handwriting is, it's, it's, you get into, you get muscle, your muscles, your writing muscles come back. So at the beginning, your hands hurt and you think you're going to get RSI, but of course we were all taught to hand write when we were children and that those muscles are very strong there. And it's lovely writing in pencil. So I have now got a system where in the morning, I get up early, <laughs> but not that early, you know, not scary early, not like some people I know, um, but generally before the rest of my household are awake, I come downstairs, I take my dog up the field where she does all the things that she needs to do. 
And I don't do sort of exhausting exercise, but I do kind of swing my arms around and, and you know, wake my neck up and things. And, um, and I reassure myself that I'm allowed the time I'm going to take to do some writing and some reading, some learning. So in with the learning and out with the creativity, kind of. Uh, and then I come in and I spend five minutes I put a timer on my phone and I spend five minutes breathing and, and not letting anything else into my head. Things come into my head and I say, I can't think about you now, please disappear. I'm just doing some breathing. So I breathe for five minutes. During that time, the kettle's boiling and I make my coffee. And then I have my coffee. By now we're about half past six in the morning. Um, so then I have my coffee and I sit down and I'm doing a sort of mixture of what Alice Armstrong scales recommended and the beginning of the Julia Cameron Artist's Way book recommended and Anne Lamott recommended. But of course, you get to the stage where, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to adapt other people's processes to suit you. So what I do, and I find this works really well, is first of all, I do a little just journaling what comes out of my head. And so it might be a reflection on the previous day or something that's happening or the fact that I never have enough money or uh, that I've overspent on the barn up the field or I'm worried about something, whatever it is. So I'll, have, I'll get that kind of out of my head. But doing that is really helpful because it sort of loosens the muscles a bit like, you know, rolling your head around while you're outside and swinging your arms and waking your, waking your heart and your lungs up. Just doing a little, oh, this is how I feel, or this is how I slept, or this is who I met, or this was interesting. It's it sort of, it's like creaking up an organ, so that getting the air flowing so that it works. And then I find myself, without putting myself under any pressure, I find myself writing my novel. And it is, for me, these are tiny little, <laughs> little, Journals, I bought them, I thought they would be bigger. <laughs> so I ordered a job lot from Amazon and on the picture on Amazon, they, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that they would be this small. I thought they'd be in you know, an A5 size, but actually they're sweet little journals. I'll use them all up. It's almost impossible to write as little as three pages in this. So I'm usually writing six or seven. So I'm not writing very much, but the story is slowly just sort of unwinding from my head. I don't know if it's any good, um, but it is on paper, which is better than being in your head. One step from your head onto the paper. And then of course there'll be, an, the first edit will be, I'll type it up. Um, and then we'll see whether we've got anything of any use. But unless I let that material out of my head onto the paper, I won't ever be able to judge whether I've got anything. There's definitely I won't have a novel. And if I wait until I have time to spend all morning writing, I may never get there. And a bit like my friend Mark McCrum is an artist and a writer. And when we, sometimes he comes to stay here and every morning before he does anything else, you know, he'll have his coffee and he'll do a sketch. He does 10 minutes every single morning just because otherwise he hasn't done anything, you know, he might, the day might go by and he's done no art. And it may be a sketch that eventually he works up into something that he sells, but it may be just something because he's work, he's just looking, he's exercising his eye. So it's possible that what I'm writing in here ends up in the bin, but it's also possible that I'll type it up and it'll become a novel. And that is really, for me, this is way further ahead than I have been for years with writing. And I cannot recommend it more highly. So, um, number one, three very good books about writing. Extremely different. <laughs> Extremely different. And this one, I will admit, I kind of stalled 60 pages in. But, you know, you never know. One day I might finish it, finish it get, get back into it. But I kind of stalled because I found myself writing. So, which is surely the point of the exercise. And the thing is about habit, 
is if the habit quickly becomes a habit where you write three pages a day, three pages a day is practically nothing. And I love the way Julia Cameron says, it doesn't matter if you sit down and write, I have to write three pages, I have to write three pages, I have to write three pages uh, on repeat until three pages are filled. I thought that was really clever because of course you don't ever do that. You start, you might start with, I have to write three pages, but then you, even if you do nothing else, it becomes a meditative exercise where you look at your handwriting and you become interested in the process and you might start writing about it or not. But you, you know, at least you've then got the muscle to write three pages because you've done some. So I love that. Uh, and I love Anne Lamont's 300 words, very simple and not I can't, I mean, I prefer not to, I can't count these. I don't know how many words this are, but three pages suits me and it's usually about six, actually. Um, and then meanwhile, read something, uh, you know, very different. So Margaret Atwood this is, is, and, and Lamott are very different animals and they're both writing very differently about writing. But it makes you think and it's, interesting to compare your process with somebody else and your your thought processes and how you work things out with somebody else you do not have to copy anybody you do not have to but you can be inspired you don't feel at some point if you're writing what's in your head you won't copy anybody because you're you're just putting what's in your head onto paper Avoid, you know, the really, really important not to write as though you're writing an essay that's going to be marked by a school teacher. M write what's coming, what is in your head. And so long as the sentences are relatively punctuated and spelt in such a way that another person can understand what you're saying, you can write in as, in, you know, your, whatever your vernacular is. Because we talk to each other in the vernacular. We're telling stories. I do not pretend but it, that what I'm doing is in any way art, but that doesn't mean it can't be thoughtful or looking at questions. So what you do when you're writing a novel is you say your premise is, this is the question I'm going to examine, maybe. And then in your head, there's a character. And if you're really lucky, the character will, al will, will allow this question to be examined by them and then along come another car the rest of the cast and they might not agree with you <laughs> they might decide that they want something else completely other to happen so you might have gone in there going i'm going to talk about this it's really important um which i did a bit with this i had a i had a my premise was something quite strong but of course because my premise was strong it had you know the bad guys were bad and the good guys were good they made them very black and white and rather boring and of course very few bad guys are really bad there's always a reason that a bad guy is bad um and the good guys are not always perfect they'd be very boring if they were and so there are bad parts of all of us and good parts of all of us but the questions that we all have to answer are the same i feel like you know, we've got a French general election, we've got English general election, we've got a well, UK general election, we've got America coming up. Nobody is flat evil and nobody is unbelievably perfect. Uh, so we all have to be pragmatic in, in the way that we deal with things. And so that's, anyway, that's, that's what I thought I'd talk about today. Um, and I'm, I hope that if you have a story in your head that has been knocking that's what i get is i get knocking they knock and um and so at last i'm allowing myself the time to work on it and even with my bills due and my expensive new studio up the field and all these general elections and all of this stuff happening i cannot tell you that half an hour a day, allowing the story out of my head onto a paper with a pencil. Um, I recommend it very highly. And if you do nothing else, maybe just try journaling and see if it turns into something else. Try journaling. <laughs> Full stop. Anyway, thanks very much for your patience and I'll see you very soon.
Oh, I can never turn this thing off. And if you're new to the channel, very welcome. Please subscribe, press the bell icon, and I'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee, or better still, join my club. Um, today we're talking about writing, but usually <laughs> we talk about growing flowers, selling flowers, arranging flowers, uh, conditioning flowers, sometimes parties, we have people to lunch, uh, so sometimes a bit of entertaining, a bit of tablescaping. Last weekend we did Festival Flowers for Glastonbury, so there's always something new going on. I try and post a couple of times a week and uh, keep the channel very realistic. I only ever talk about what I'm actually doing, my actual life, my actual, <laughs> what's actually going on here at this flower farm between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton. Also, sometimes there are ducks. Anyway, enjoy.